Hello, Daniel here with the Pedal Peasants YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, I appreciate your time. In today's video, I wanna bring you a one year update on my 8,000 watt electric bike. Should you have any questions at any point throughout this video, I'm gonna encourage you to drop a comment down below and I will do my absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring that bell for me as I will be bringing more videos like this for you all. With that being said, let's dive straight on into this. Within this video, I want to try to give you all an update and let you know how my experience is going with my 8000 watt e-bike and I'm going to try to relay as much info as possible. If I didn't touch base on something specific, again, drop those comments down below. The results that I'm going to relay with you here in this video definitely do vary from rider to rider. So some of the results that I am experiencing on my end may be different from another video that you may have watched. So I want that to be noted before I actually get into all the details here. Here I am riding it in the open public street right here. And even after a year later, for me personally, my 8,000 watt e-bike still feels brand new. Keep in mind, I have about a hundred or so miles on the bike. So I haven't actually rode it extensively as other riders may have. So from my experience, Again, it's still kicking strong, even with putting 100 plus miles on it, I don't notice anything wrong with it or the battery or anything at all. Even the tires still feel brand new to me in which almost it practically is. I feel like another thing that is important to note along the way is that I'm a very, I guess, subtle rider. I don't do like any wheeling or anything, any burnouts or anything like that. I don't put any like really harsh wear and tear onto the bike just simply because I want the thing for its mileage to get the most each and every time that I do go out. The idea is to be able to have a bike that can take me anywhere in the city that I would want to go and back. And that is the idea behind having this bike. I understand that I could have gotten many other electric bikes. However, this one specific seemed right because I still wanted to be able to keep up with certain speeds of traffic as well in certain areas. So there was a lot of different, I guess, considerations that I needed to consider when getting this bike. And I just felt this one was the best for me in terms of appearance and performance and closest to what I was looking for. Although the top speed for my e-bike is about 60 to 70 miles an hour depending on the terrain, I'm doing about maybe 30, 35 right here and I'm not trying to draw too much attention. I'm trying to kind of blend in so if cops were to be driving by, they wouldn't see me on this electric bike doing 50, 60 miles an hour or anything like that. So I was just cruising right here subtly in a manner that wouldn't bring too much attention to me more than the bike already brings on its own. So that's the idea behind my riding right here. I am just trying to blend in and not stand out too much. If you're curious about the attention that I get from police, allow me to try to put it into a better perspective for you. So I've rode my electric bike many, many times. However, I put about 100 miles on it. And within that time frame, I have come across several police. There was even an instance where I was kind of testing the speed and I hit 30 real quick and I ended up burning out right in front of the two police cars who were parked. They looked at me, I looked at them, and then they kind of just went about their way. I didn't really get anything more than that. So anytime when I personally come across cops, it hasn't been anything that would you know, concern me and or worry me. But again, keep in mind, that goes back to me being a subtle rider. I'm not out here doing willies and or doing 60 on my bike in a pub or in a public open area that requires a 30 speed limit. So you get the idea behind it. I'm just trying my best to kind of blend in and obey the rules around me just so that way I could enjoy the ride. As the bike ages, I will be bringing you more updated videos along the way. So be sure to stick around, hit that subscribe button for me, ring that bell. And I encourage you, if you have any questions at all, drop them down below and I will do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. So knowing that I have about 100 miles or so, knowing that I'm a very subtle rider, I want to get into the battery of the bike and then touch base on some more specifics. For the battery, I've maybe charged it about all but two or three times in the time that I've had it. So it takes me a little bit to drain the battery all the way down. For me personally, I don't want to reach 0% out anywhere because the bike does have a decent amount of weight to it. It is a heavy bike, so I don't want to be walking and having to push this bike uphill or let alone at all. So as I'm out, I'm very mindful of my battery life as anyone would be with gas in their car. When I'm around about 25%, I try to start heading towards or stay close to home base. So that way, again, I'm not stuck walking the bike. Now, 
In terms of battery life though, again, I've probably charged it all but three times in that time frame. So it does take me a little bit to actually use the battery all the way down. When I leave the battery, let's say for example, in idle for about a week or so, there's no real battery fluctuation happening. The battery seems pretty stable overall. With the stock battery that my 8000 watt e-bike came with, I'm very, very happy with the results. I could only imagine if I upgraded to, let's say, a name brand battery like a Samsung, I could probably get even more mileage than what I'm getting now with the stock battery. And that's another thing that really drew me into this 8000 watt e-bike was that I can kind of interchange the parts and update it and customize it along the way. I'm going to make more videos showing you how I do minor customizations and cosmetic tweaks, so stay around for that as well. But all in all, one year later, I do feel like the battery is still kicking strong and I do feel like it's going to be like that for the foreseeable future. And again, I will bring you all more videos on the bike as it ages, but all in all, for right now, at the moment, I do love the bike still. I love it just as much as I did the day before. Every time I see it, I get happy and excited to go ahead and go for a ride. It's always a smooth ride and it's still just as quiet when I'm riding it today as it was the day that I got it. Again, not really much has changed and I think a lot of that has to do with my riding style. I don't really put unnecessary abuse and wear and tear onto the bike more than I need to. I think the most abuse that my bike will experience is probably hitting a speed bump, um, something to this extent. And again, that's very, very minor and minuscule. Cars are doing it every day. Bikes are doing it every day. So the wear and tear that I put on my bike is minimal and it makes for a smooth ride each and every time I ride it. And again, my tires are still new. I'm not doing any burnout. So there's really no apparent wear and tear. So I still have some serious miles with the current tires that I am using and the battery the battery seems fine I think the last time that I was on the bike it was at around I think 76% and I did I think a 15 mile ride that day which is the ride that I'm sharing with you here on this ride right here we were about 80% and then when we were heading towards the area that we were going to we ended up at around I think maybe 76% something to this extent so the battery life that it took to get about 15 miles was actually very very uh, small it was a small amount of power I could have done this trip maybe three to six more times allow me to let you take a listen to the bike so that way you can hear how it runs I had the video muted because I didn't have a windscreen muffling the audio so it's real muffled and airy but let me let you take a listen So as you can hear, even after a year later, there's more air hitting the camera than there is bike. So the bike is still really smooth and quiet. Here is me keeping up with this truck right here. We're both doing about 35. I want it to kind of ease off now and you can see the truck is passing. So that way I don't bring that sort of attention to myself from cops. I am in a open public area, so I kind of want to be on my best behavior. Every rider is different. And I do feel that it's all of these choices that we make along the ride that determine the quality of the ride. Let's say for example, I tend to take my bike off-roading and I'm over here jumping off uh, you know uh, little hills and doing all types of crazy stuff off-roading and putting that sort of wear and tear and abuse on the bike then I feel I'm gonna experience a little bit more adversities especially if I'm gonna be out here riding on the road so you kind of get the idea for the type of riding that I do this is the type of ride that I experience because of the behavior and conductivity that I have when I'm on the bike again I just use this bike for sightseeing exploring I can get some serious miles out of it and go places and see things that I wouldn't have been able to see or get to as easily in a car. That's not to say that this bike is not capable of off-roading and you know giving you a good time off-road. I'm sure that it's capable of that and will hold up. However, what I'm trying to say is within a one year span, if you're doing more off-road riding, then you may be doing more rigorous riding than I am. So therefore you may have a different experience and a different opinion about the bike than I do. For my type of riding, I personally love it. I love this bike right here. I'm excited to do more rides and bring you all more videos. Even the structural integrity of my bike, I haven't noticed anything adverse or anything that would, you know, give me any sort of major concerns that I would want to relay here in this video. Now, if I had to say some adversities that I am experiencing with the bike, the only thing that really comes to mind is when I stop, the brakes are really, really loud. That's the only negative thing that I, you know, experience with the bike. It's just really loud brakes, but honestly, it really doesn't bother me. It's kind of next to none 
nothing for me so therefore it's not really something that is a deal breaker i have really loud brakes you know it is what it is but they still work they're really good brakes i like them for uh, their purpose and they do the job for me so therefore the problem really isn't there however they are loud when i stop and to be fair, it's not like on every single stop, some stops are louder than others. However, nonetheless, there is a squeak coming from my brakes when I do stop. But all in all, my first year having the 8,000 watt e-bike has definitely been a ride. It has given me a lot of joy and fun along the way. I have seen a lot of things I wouldn't have been able to see again in a car. So therefore, I'm appreciative and grateful of that. I'm excited to bring you all more videos. So be sure to hit that subscribe button for me and ring that bell as I am going to be bringing more videos like this for you. If you have any questions at all, I'm going to encourage you to drop a comment down below and I will do my absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. I do have social medias under the same name as my YouTube channel. I have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I would truly appreciate your support over there as well. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. You have a great day.